to roll the dice. By chance they came on devil's game, and gosh, they paid the price. Paid the price. And now they're fighting for their lives on a mission fraught with dread. And if they proceed but don't succeed, well, the devil will take their heads. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Cuphead. A ball of radiant light that has entered my life and brought me so much joy. Cuphead is everything I could want. It's almost purely a boss rush. It's one of the most charming games I've ever played. It's brilliant, creative, and absurdly beautiful. Once upon a time in a magical place called Inkwell Isle, there were two brothers named Cuphead and Mugman. They lived without a care under the watchful eye of the wise Elder Kettle. And we already get into this goddamn amazing soundtrack. One day the, do the two boys wander far from home and despite the Elder Kettle's many warnings, ended up on the wrong side of the tracks and entered the Devil's Casino. Inside Cuphead and Mugman soon found themselves on a winning streak at the craps table. Hot dog, exclaimed King Dice, the casino sleazy manager. These fellas can't lose. Nice rum, boys, laughed a newcomer. The brothers gasped. It was the casino's owner, the devil himself. Now, how about we raise the stakes, he suggested with a toothy grin. Win one more roll and all the loot in my casino is yours, the devil boomed. But if you lose, I'll have your souls. Deal? God, I love this track. Cuphead, blinded by easy riches, nodded and grabbed the dice for a throw. Good gosh, Cuphead, no! cried Mugman, for he understood the danger, but it was too late. <laughs> Snake eyes, laughed the devil while slamming the floor. You lose. The brothers trembled in fear as he loomed over them. Now, about those souls. The brothers pleaded for their very lives. There must be another way to repay you, Mugman stammered. Yes, but please, Mr. Cuphead added. Listen, the, oh my god, this track. Hmm, perhaps there is, the devil snickered, pulling out a parch piece of parchment. I have here a list of all my runaway debtors. Collect their souls for me, and I just might pardon you two mugs. Now get going, the devil roared, kicking the boys out most rudely. You have till midnight tomorrow to collect every one of those souls. Otherwise, I'll be the one collecting yours. Cuphead and Mugman were terribly frightened and ran away as fast as they could. Come on, Mug, panic Cuphead. We have to find the Elder Kettle. He'll know what to do. Oh, even the hourglass looks great. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be playing this. I swore I was not going to LP this immediately, but like, the more time that passed between beating it when it came out, like just a, a couple weeks or a month ago, and now it's like, it, it's been eating at me, gnawing at me, the desire to LP this game. Uh, so Elder Kettle, is going to give us the ability to fight back against uh, the debtors to Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. King Dice's casino. And now, uh, oh god, this is one of the grave sins that Cuphead commits, is calling the X button on the DS4 the cross button. That was a good duck. Uh, we're coming up to the hardest part of the game, and I think we beat it. I think we have beaten the hardest part of the game. Glad we got uh, through that. This standard, like, running gun controls, kind of contra controls. We have our jump, we have our shoot, we have an air dash, we have a parry, uh, which you can do in midair with the jump button. And also, if we're playing this in local co-op, this is a couch co-op only game, hopefully they patch multiplayer co-op in. Not that I'm complaining about a couch co-op game, because we get so few of those. Uh, you can resurrect your partner if they die by parrying their souls. Uh, and as the tutorial alluded to, anything that is pink, anything at all that's pink, can be parried. Hey fellas, looks like you're in for it now. Well, I used to be the same, always getting into trouble. Running, jumping, shooting. But now I prefer just strolling around and going to the pictures. But hey, let me give you a hand. Take this. 
we are now up to four gold coins out of 30 in the entire game. We got one at the end of the tutorial, and we got three just for talking to that NPC. Oh, so good! I love this simple little animation and that harrowing, horrifying welcome. Uh, so let's get the spread shot right off the bat with our four coins that we start with. Our, our charity coins. Uh, the spread shot is an alternate fire. We can rotate between two different shot types. Our standard pea shooter. Uh, and for now, we're going to be sticking with spread shot. I'll try to show every single shot off. I'm not going to be abusing the charge shot. Also, we got the root pack in Botanic Panic. Our first boss. So, Cuphead is, like I said, almost purely a boss rush. Uh, part of the reason that it was delayed for so long was so they could add a few platforming levels. I think there are six total in the game. They're called running guns. Gotta get that worm. Uh, a parry, by the way, will give you one EX bar, or represented by those cards in the bottom left next to the health. Oh my god, this is so good! This game is delightful! Uh, that's a real easy attack to evade, though. You saw some of the tears were pink. This, I love the carrot's eye animation. It rings so true to the style they're going for. Uh, the cards are your EX meter. Oh, whoops, I meant to dash there. It's third eye. Jesus. Uh, so here's how this will work. I'm gonna talk over, uh, a boss, say what I have to say until I'm done saying it, and then, if I am finished my thought, and I'm dying to the boss repeatedly, that's when it will cut ahead. Uh, that way I can do my long, coherent thoughts uh, without interrupting them with a big cut and still skip out any unnecessary deaths without skipping all of the failed attempts. Uh, this game is divided up into multiple different islands. Uh, there are four in total. I guess the fourth one is technically an island. Uh into itself, but there are basically four zones of the game. Oh wow, I lost that train of thought real quick. Uh, okay, yeah, no, I got it back. Forest Follies is gonna be our first running gun, which is a straightforward platforming level. Um, Inkwell Island 1 should not be given to me too many of those failed attempts, but as we move into 2 and 3, the game will actually get really difficult. Uh, so I should get most of my thoughts out of the way on, uh, on Inkwell Isle 1, while the game is still relatively easy. Uh, I say relatively. Some people are going to have a harder time with this than others. Uh, if you've never played something like Gunstar Heroes or Contra before, this will probably be harder for you. Or if you've never played shmups before. Uh, because a lot of... It, it's not a shmup per se, but you can see just from the playstyle, uh, a lot of the skills that you pick up in shmups will apply. Uh, and that's namely the ability to keep yourself alive over favoring damage, uh, because if you're if you're kind of tunnel visioning on Cuphead, uh, and just holding down fire, you will eventually kill whatever you're aiming at. But if you're just focusing instead on the enemy or the boss, you're gonna have a much harder time surviving. Surviving uh, survival trumps going boss to the wall and going all out on DPS. And we should have got all the coins. Cool, perfect run. Uh, so on bosses, instead of being ranked on gold coins, because you don't get any on boss fights, you get ranked instead on uh, how many specials you use. Uh, you normally have to use... This is a uh, little shortcut, by the way. Ruse of an ooze. You get ranked on uh, how many specials you use. So it's normally six. Like you have to use uh, six cards worth of EX or specials. You can duck this attack to get a six out of six. And then bosses also have three parries that you usually have to do. Uh, some harder than others. In the case of the ooze here, this is your only opportunity to get those three parries in 
Remember, just because it's not a projectile and it's not an attack against you does not mean you can't parry it. So those three pink question marks are your only opportunities during this boss fight to get your three parries in. And just like before you can duck the boxing glove, he really just takes up more screen space, which is the only thing that makes him a little bit harder when he gets, uh, goes in that second phase. And this is the idea behind every fight, is just progressively more insane phases. Whoops, I ran back into that after I dodged out of the way. Uh, boss fights tend to be fairly long and involved, uh, especially as you get into some of the later ones, some of the uh, non-Inkwell Isle 1 bosses. There are a couple tricky bosses on the first island, though. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the first one that has the potential to give you a little bit of trouble uh, next, I think. Ah, we did take that hit. This should be an A- minus still. We're going for minimum of a B for every single boss, preferably A's. Uh, and there's actually a good reason for that, aside from just wanting to satisfy my ego a bit. <laughs> Uh, so like I was saying before, I kind of cut myself off. This is a small shortcut over to the next running gun level. We'll do that in a minute. First, we want to come up to the top of the map. Uh, where this dude is waiting for us, next to a hatchet buried in a stump. Was that you two want to fly in a plane like I do? Ha! You're not sitting in any cockpit until you study those blueprints. Well, let's see what the blueprints have to say. Airplane blueprint. So we have square to shoot, circles for special, crosses, X is parry. God, I cannot infect myself with that. Uh, and triangle is to shrink. Same basic controls as normal, just in a different context. Uh, there's our special. Uh, also remember, we're building bar by parrying. And let's just see what this special looks like, or the super, I should say, when we have all five bars. That is one of my favorite early animations. And then we have that instead of a dash. It increases our speed and makes us smaller, but our bullets become like half as strong? Something like that. And that's to uh, set us up for Hildeberg in Threatening Zeppelin. Such a good name. A great slam and then Hildeberg is the first boss in the game that is likely to give some people trouble. Like, the ooze is dead simple. Uh, and the, uh, the root pack, eh, they're not that bad. The carrot can give some people trouble. Uh, but this boss has a lot going on. Uh, and the primary challenge of Cuphead is not necessarily that it's a bullet hell, but that it just puts enough on the screen at a time to really, really split your attention. Ooh. It's not necessarily about things being huge or taking, about, uh, taking up huge amounts of real estate on screen or filling the screen with bullshit or making the projectiles really fast. It's just, where is your focus at? Can you split your focus up and divide it so many ways at a time while maneuvering around? And then also adding the complexity of parrying things for that skill rating, uh, for that ranking at the end on top of that. Uh, also, Hildeberg, I don't know if we're going to see it, has one additional phase. She goes between... Uh, the Taurus, uh, the Cupid, and one other uh, constellation phase randomly. Normally she gets two off. I think we got enough bullets, right? We got enough berries. Uh, she also has a Gemini phase, which can get kind of brutal. Here we have to dodge stars. Uh, she's going to take up like half the screen. And then look at the top, there are UFOs. Uh, there are two different kinds of UFOs. There are red ones and brown ones. Note, ah, fuck. Well, I'm just gonna pop this now. Note that the UFOs behave differently. Uh, there's a trick to making those saucers easier to navigate. The red ones fire their tractor beams, which will hurt you uh, when they are right over you. The brown ones will fire uh, shortly before they pass over you. 
Oh man. Oh no, we did miss a parry. We did miss a parry. So that's only a B plus. Uh, this is a this bleh, opens a shortcut down to the next running gun, which we uh, skipped over to get to Hildeberg. Everything is gonna wind up connecting back on itself. This second running gun is significantly more tricky. It's probably the hardest thing on Inkwell Isle One, to be honest. Uh, it's it's either this or one of the bosses that we haven't seen yet. Uh, but there are a couple of things go. There's first of all a lot more on screen. There's the sh crazy Woody Woodpeckers. Um, but also, because the surface is sloped, it's a lot harder to hit things that are right in front of you. Uh, now we get to this, where I think the level eases off in difficulty a little bit. But there is still one really nasty little trick up its sleeve. You do have to navigate a bit too while waiting on these uh, log elevators. <laughs> oh, and the bees! The bees! So the art of uh, of Cuphead mimics the style of cartoons from the 1930s. Uh, the fluid animation, the, the surreal, almost disturbing, demented style of some of them. Uh, that's what it's going for. The game was in development for seven long years. It seemed like year after year, it just kept getting pushed back and... Every time it was delayed, I would get so dejected because it's it's such a marvelous sight to behold. And I just wanted it in my hand so bad. Uh, they actually tried to do this at the turn of the century, but they just didn't have the resources to keep pursuing it back then. Uh, then they went for it again ten years later in 2010. And, oh my god, I never even noticed this before because... I spend so much time not looking at the enemies and looking at my character instead to stay alive. There's so many little details I didn't get to notice on my first playthrough, like his mane opening up into this big maw. Jesus, I love this art so much! Ah. <sighs> yeah, they uh, were able to secure themselves funding to crank this out finally. And it's, it's evident how much work has gone into this. There are the, the post-processing filters, like the color bleed, the heavy film grain. I turned the color bleed down a lot, by the way. Uh, it's, it's like one or two notches up, but too heavily, and it's just, I, I think it looks kind of nasty. Ah, oh, this little guy has to save up to get his uh, the chip on his blade fixed. He really wants someone to deck... Mr. King Dice one. Uh, you'll notice there was a little bit of yellow behind him, by the way. He's giving you a hint. Oh, you, she was about to hit us with the old parry move because she thought we were a ghost. Speaking of not being in places, would you fellas mind moving on? You're spooking the fish. It's a fish fishing for fish. That's grisly in a way. <laughs> But yeah, it's got the color bleed, it's got the heavy film grain filter over it. That helps to emulate the look of those 30s era cartoons, but... No amount of shaders or filters or whatever can match this level of authenticity on their own. This is all hand-drawn frame by frame, cell by cell, and then digitally transferred and colored in Photoshop. Like, the animations are just gorgeous. They're beautiful 24 frames per second, even though the game is running at 60. Oops, almost let this guy through. Uh, you just can't let the ghosts touch the glowing urn here. And they can't hurt you, but you can't shoot them. You have to, as the fish hinted, uh, just parry the shit out of them. It's just gorgeous. One of the most scintillating art styles in gaming. Cute little old man ghost. Everybody who talks about Cuphead, whether they like it or not, whether they find the gameplay appealing or not, has nothing but praise for the craft that has gone into its art and animation and its music. I'm known as the legendary Chalice. Pleased to meet you. I was searching for a magic uh, for magic and got trapped by those ghosts. Speaking of ma oh, this animation is great! That's my favorite one that Cuphead does! 
There are other mausoleums around Inkville Isle. Yeah, there are three in total. And each... <laughs> just demolished it, desecrated the dead. Uh, each time we beat a mausoleum, we will get a new super art. Previously, when we filled up all five EX meters, or the five cards, uh, we could just exhaust them individually with EX moves. Uh, but now, when we get all five and we hit the, the EX button, instead of just firing off a regular shot, we'll fire off a super, which we'll see next time. Uh, I just want to stop in and fill this last slot in our, in our inventory, our loadout. Uh, with a smoke bomb. I'm not going to be using the smoke bomb too much. It's everybody's favorite charm. Except mine. Uh, I think it's kind of disorienting. It turns your dash invincible. <laughs> so it is pretty good. Uh, just not my preference. That's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.